Santa Claus is real. The modern conception of Santa Claus is a multicultural blend mythicized with lore over the centuries, but still stemming from a real historical person known as Nicholas of Myra. In our day, particularly in American culture, St. Nicholas is mostly used as a mascot of secularized, commercialized Christmas, but this is not the case in every culture. Some recognize and remember Santa Claus as St. Nicholas, while others separate this new blended mythical version of St. Nick from the historic person, recognizing them as two separate entities. Now let's stop for a second and point something out. Around this time of year, you have people go against Santa Claus based on the idea that Santa equals Satan just because you can rearrange the letters and come up with the word Satan from the word Santa. But in reality, Santa does not mean Satan. Santa is used in many languages still today and is translated as saint, coming from the Latin sanctus. You can just look it up. Again, it's not a conspiracy. Where does Santa Claus come from? It came from Nicholas's Dutch nickname, Sinterklaas, which is a shortened form of St. Nicholas. Anyway, who is Nicholas of Myra? Much of what we know is legend, yet Nicholas was known for his rock-solid faith and great generosity. Further, we know that he was a leader in the Church of modern-day Turkey, who lived traditionally between AD 270 and AD 343. He was known for giving his wealth to those in need and being zealous for the truth. Legends say that whenever households left their shoes out to dry, Nicholas would leave money for those in need. One of the most popular accounts of Nicholas's generosity was when he provided bags of gold for three daughters' dowries, which would allow them to marry and prevent them from being sold into slavery. He was also known for his compassion towards children and sailors, but especially for his passion for the gospel. Legend has it that he lived underneath the Diocletian persecution in AD 303-313, in which he was exiled, imprisoned, and eventually released, covered in his own blood from beatings while still confessing Christ and proclaiming the gospel. Additionally, Nicholas is credited with freeing three innocent men from death by intervening in their impending execution. One of the most famous legends in church history is found at the Council of Nicaea in AD 325, in which Christians came together to resolve the Arian controversy. The Council of Nicaea dealt with the teachings of Arius that propagated that Jesus was a created being lower than God, and it declared that heresy. But legend states that when Arius sang a hymn reflecting this heresy, Nicholas hit him for his blasphemy. Now, many do point out that this legend grew in popularity in the 14th century, but it nonetheless can inform us of how people view Nicholas and his zeal for the truth. Overall, what we see is a generous man beaten for preaching the gospel, who was nonetheless zealous for the truth of scripture and extremely zealous for the Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we do today? In many ways, the modern Santa Claus story brings dishonor to the man it was formed around as Nicholas detested myths and errors. Nicholas lived his life all for Christ, and we have allowed our culture's myths to strip that away from Nicholas and forming a new mythical Santa Claus. Santa is most often depicted as a tracker of moralism, looking to merits to earn gifts and favor. This is contrary to the message of Scripture and St. Nicholas himself. In many ways, our culture has turned a brother in Christ into the very opposite of what he stood for in attaching myths and conditional clauses to his generosity. In reality, Christmas is a celebration of the incarnation of Jesus Christ, and Nicholas would want Jesus Christ to remain at the center of the season. However, whether or not a family actually plays the Santa Claus game is up to them. Either approach, whether abstaining or continuing in that game, should be approached with wisdom and ensuring that Jesus is at the center. If a family wants to have some semblance of Santa Claus, you can tell the story of the man who lived for Christ and who is an exemplar of what it means to live for Christ and in the faith. And regardless of whether or not you participate in the Santa Claus game or do not participate in the Santa Claus game, let's ensure that we keep Christmas from being a reward system based on merits. And the reason why is simple, because Christmas is about the complete opposite. We could not merit the gift of Jesus Christ taking on flesh sent from the Father to redeem us by the power of the Holy Spirit. If we follow the moralistic code enshrined in the cultural understanding of Christmas today, we would never receive the gift of Jesus Christ because we would never be good enough to receive such a gift. If our parallel for giving gifts during Christmas season is this giving of the Son to us for our salvation, then we would do well to reflect an open, generous, non-meritorious, gift-giving mentality. 
Now, while my book, Holidays in the Feast, doesn't speak much to Santa Claus, it does speak to the alleged pagan roots of Christmas and also presents a biblical case for celebrating Christmas. If that sounds interesting to you, you can pick up Holidays in the Feast online at retailers such as Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and so on and so forth.